Hello and welcome to the workout. I am so glad you are here. We have got a full body strength workout plus cardio intervals. I'm super excited. We are gonna be doing three exercises per superset for a total of four supersets. So we're gonna be doing a total of 24 sets in general. We're putting three exercises back to back with no rest in between. Then at the end of that superset, you're gonna take a short little rest and we're gonna repeat that superset. If you want a harder workout today, you're gonna take very little rest and you're gonna do a total of three supersets. And if you wanna stay with me, we're gonna be doing a total of two supersets. Your job is to find a weight load where the strength exercises are challenging. I want the last two reps of each set to be challenging. You're gonna aim for 12 repetitions. If you're limited by your home exercise equipment, please do 15 or maybe even 20 repetitions. The ideal scene is that your weights are heavy enough and challenging enough that 12 reps is hard. Let's get started. Separate your feet. Let's take a big inhale up. Exhale it out and give me two more like that. Now, I want you to really stretch up super, super high towards the sky. Exhale it out. Do it one more time. When you're inhaling up, really stretch up super, 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 super high. Exhale it out. Left hand up over your head and reach. I want you to very actively reach up towards your ceiling. Lengthen the space from your rib cage to your hip bone so that you're actively reaching up activating that transverse abdominis. Give me a slight lean and hold, continuing to extend up and out to activate and grab that, that um, uh, transverse abdominis, which is your abdominal muscle that really holds in that core. Make sure you keep breathing, relax it out. Same thing on the right arm, inhale it up reach it up, lengthen as high as you possibly can, rib cage to hip bone, lengthening out, creating as much space as possible, activating that transverse abdominis so that your abdomen draws in all on its own and you don't even have to think about it. Keep breathing, big reach, and exhale it out. Take a big inhale up, interlock your fingers, bring them behind your head, Activate your shoulders and elbows back, bringing your chest forward, dropping your shoulders towards your hips, opening the chest. We've got a chest exercise today, so I just wanna kinda open up your chest and shoulders a little before we get going. We're gonna go through a series of preparatory exercises next to get you ready for the workout. Relax it out and take your feet separated. Let's come into some spinal rotation. I love this exercise before a workout because it releases tension, it resets the spine, it gives a great stretch all around the core muscles and the spinal rotation muscles, opens up the hips a little bit, and I want you to really activate your glute on the leg that you're turning away from. So, left glute, right glute. Let your arms just swing where they go, trying to look all the way over your shoulder behind you, getting into that good spinal rotation. Keep your abs braced and drawn inward at all times throughout the workout today. Really draw those abs in, keep them strong and tight. Two more here. And relax, bring your feet together. Find your base of support, feet together, bend into your knees, and I want you to come onto one leg for balance. Now, look around your space to intentionally throw your balance off. Look left to right, look intentionally around your space, just tapping down whenever you need to for balance. And now I want you to look up, look down, look all around, keeping your knee soft. Keep your knee soft. It, this should be intentionally throwing your balance off. That is the exercise. It's an incredible exercise to improve your balance, but also to improve the functionality of the entire leg and hip. Relax, and let's do the same thing on the other side, feet together. Bend into your knees first. Keep that standing knee soft. Find your balance first. Let it settle in for a couple of seconds. And then I want you to look around your space. You're gonna notice your foot grabs, 
You're gonna notice that your arch activates. You're gonna notice that your leg or your calf might even start warming up or burning. We want that muscle to really be grabbing and activating. Looking around, look up, look down, look all around. The more you're able to look with your head and your eyes, the more it's going to challenge your balance. One of the best exercises you should be doing every single day to keep your balance strong and also to keep all of those synergistic muscles of the legs firing and active and super great for your arches. Couple seconds and relax it out. Take your feet separated. Take a look down. Feet should be truly parallel to each other. And let's come into a modified side sit, really pressing your hips back in space as much as you can. Heavy on your heels, sitting super deep. Press your hips back, press them back in space, drawing into your abdomen. And as this gets comfortable, we're gonna take it a bit deeper, come all the way down and just sweep across the floor tapping past your toe. Sit deeply into your hips, pressing those hips back in space so that your body weight is on your heels. Body weight heavy onto the heels, keeping your toes relaxed, getting a great preparatory activation in the leg that's bent getting a great dynamic stretch in the leg that's straight. Really great exercise to make sure you don't get too much inner thigh muscle soreness from the workout. Preparing those adductors. Two more. And relax. Bringing your feet together, we're gonna come into a reverse lunge. Reach up actively. Step back into a reverse lunge, alternating sides. Just coming into a modified reverse lunge to start. Big reach, reverse lunge, big reach. And as this feels easy and comfortable for you, make it bigger by tapping all the way to the ground, all the way down, big reach, drop it back. Stay heavy onto your front leg. This really is about activating your front leg. You're getting a good dynamic stretch on the hip flexor of the leg that's stepping back. And we're warming up the body by getting your heart rate going and shifting your metabolism into exercise physiology, which is different than the physiology when you're at rest. Stay heavy on that heel, big reach. Make this movement as big as you can. And two more. And relax. Okay, we're gonna jump into the workout. You're gonna need several different weights of dumbbells. You do not need a resistance band today unless you want to use one um, in substitution for some of the dumbbell exercises. So let me show you our first superset. You're gonna want a heavier set of dumbbells, maybe eight, maybe 10, maybe 15. First exercise, goblet squat, toes are turned open chest is up. You're going to sit deeply, dropping the hips down, keeping the chest lifted. Squeeze your glutes. 12 repetitions of goblet squat. Second exercise is a dumbbell upright row. Palms are facing your thighs. Elbows pull up super high, even though you keep your shoulders released and down. Dumbbell upright row. You could do this with a band if you prefer. And our first cardio interval is going to be lateral jumps. So from here, feet together, staying low. We're jumping across the space, back and forth for about 20 seconds. You guys ready? Let's go. Grab your one heavy dumbbell for goblet squat. Please count your repetitions. Toes are turned open. 
chest is lifted. Keep that dumbbell in contact with your chest. Dropping down, squeeze your glutes. Promise me that you are squeezing your glutes very actively, very definitively at the top of the exercise. Super important, keep your chest up, dropping those hips down and squeezing the glutes. Now remember, the weight should be challenging enough for you that 12 reps are hard. So if you get to about the 10th rep and it's comfortable, you need to grab a heavier dumbbell on your next set. Three more here. Next exercise will be that dumbbell upright row. One more, grab both those dumbbells. Five, eight, maybe 10 pound dumbbells here. Certainly you can go heavier depending on your fitness level and your experience. If you have healthy shoulders, I want you to end with your elbows slightly higher than your shoulders. Elbows higher than the shoulders if you have healthy shoulders. If you have problematic shoulders, you're gonna want to end with your elbows about in alignment with the shoulders and with the hands in alignment with the elbows. Right about here if you've got shoulder problems. If you've got good shoulders, really lift those elbows. Even though you're lifting the elbows and you're coming into an upright motion, keep your shoulder blades anchored towards your hips, down and back. And one more, and we've got our cardio interval, lateral jumps. So listen, make sure you are careful about the space where you are jumping. Sit nice and low, starting with your feet together. Make sure that you are covering space so that you are not, um, you're not basically dragging your foot across your floor because that really does tend to increase the chance of tripping. So I don't want you jumping up. This isn't a super high jump. We are staying super low, but just make sure that you're coming off the ground there about an inch or two to protect your feet and to make sure that you don't trip. As this feels better, make it bigger. Cover some space, sit super deep, really, really deep here. Make that jump bigger. Use your arms as you need to, if you want to. Really covering the space to get that heart rate up. Power through the legs, big push. Pushing off from that outside leg as you jump. One more and we're taking a short break. If you're here for a harder workout, please take a very short break, about 10 seconds, and then you're gonna repeat these three exercises again for your second superset. We're gonna take about a 10 to 20 second rest. Please make sure that you keep your feet moving in space during these rest phases. You can literally just walk back and forth in space, but keep your legs moving a little. You can dance, you can tap it out in space, just keep your legs moving during the rest phase and mentally prepare for that second set. How was the first set? If the first set was comfortable, you are going to uh, make sure that you use a heavier dumbbell going into the second set. So if that goblet squat was comfortable and easy, get yourself a heavier dumbbell for your goblet squat and or your upright row. Again, depending on what your ability is. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Goblet squat. I'm grabbing a heavier dumbbell, toes are open. Toes are definitively open for a goblet squat here. Chest nice and high. Keep those, keep your body weight into your heel, dropping it all the way down. Stand and squeeze your glutes. Stand and squeeze your glutes. Count out your reps. If you've got a really heavy weight load here, you might only need 10 repetitions. If you've got a moderate weight, 12 repetitions. And if you're limited by your home equipment, you're gonna use whatever weight load you have for the number of repetitions that feel challenging. It might be 15, it might be 20 today. Really depends on your energy. It also depends on your fitness level. Two more. 
and going into dumbbell upright row. 12 reps, depending on your weight load, depending on your fitness level, keeping those elbows nice and high, knees are soft, abs drawn in, neck is long. Even though we're lifting upward, keep your shoulder girdle anchoring downward. Shoulder girdle downward. Big lift. Nice and long on that neck. 12 reps. And two more. And get ready for that cardio interval. Getting the heart rate up today. Burning extra calories during this workout. Give these lateral jumps everything you got. Give it lots of energy. Make sure that you are safe in your space. Sit nice and low. Here we go. Take it out. Really cover that distance. Sitting super, super low. Keeping your knees bent. Big reach. Come on, really cover that distance. Pressing off the outer leg. So you're pushing off the leg that you're jumping away from. You're not pulling with your reaching leg, you're pushing with that outer leg. So right leg push, left leg push. Push off that outer leg. Sitting super deep, really cover some distance, getting that heart rate up. About 20 seconds here. Good job guys, I see you. Two more, one more, keep your feet moving. Walk around your space. Walk it out. Keep your legs moving. Short little break. If you want a harder workout today, you're going to take about a 10 second break. And you're going to go in for a third superset. We will be doing two supersets of each of these three exercises for a total of four supersets today. Walk it out. And if you want a harder workout, Head on in to your third superset. Let me show you our next series of exercises here. We've got a two dumbbell single leg deadlift. Three, fives, eight or even 10 pound dumbbells. You can certainly do this with body weight only if that's more comfortable for you. But this exercise tends to work better if you are holding some weight. Two dumbbells, standing knee is soft, we're rotating forward, squeezing that glute at the top. Squeezing the glute of the leg that you're standing on at the top. Single leg deadlift, 12 reps. We'll do the other leg in the same set. Second exercise, feet together, knees soft, RDL position with a neutral curvature in your lower back. Bent over dumbbell row, pausing at the top and our cardio exercise is jumping jacks. So we are gonna do push jacks, push jacks for our cardio. Make sure you've got a safe, somewhat soft surface for those jumping jacks. Are you guys ready? Grab your two dumbbells. We got single leg deadlift. So if you've been with me before, you know I love a single leg deadlift. It appears in almost every single workout I do because it's that powerful. Toe is turned open slightly, soft knee, two dumbbells. They come together in front of your shin before you rotate back up. Now, this exercise is not about trying to touch the ground with the dumbbells. This is not a flexibility competition. This is a strength exercise for the hamstring and the glutes. And that hinges upon, pun intended, those dumbbells only coming to about mid shin height. They could come a little lower, but the goal is that your upper body is about parallel to the floor with maybe a bit of an incline. You're just above parallel to the floor, really driving into that heel, squeezing your glute here squeezing the glute of the leg that you're standing on because this exercise is focused on the leg that you're standing on. Same thing on the other leg. 
10, 12, 15 repetitions, depending on your fitness level and depending on the equipment that you have access to. Promise me you're gonna give that glute some love right there. Really tuck your pelvis under. Really press the hip forward so that you can actively clamp down here, squeezing the glute right there. It's big. A lot of people don't finish this exercise off with that hip lock. And it's super important that you do lock your hip by squeezing the glute at the top. Remember, this is a standing leg exercise. So mentally, you really wanna be thinking about focusing on the leg that you're standing on. 10, 12, 15 reps. Going right into dumbbell bent over row. Feet together, knees soft, neutral arch in your lower back, not a flat back. Neutral arch, hands come towards your rib cage the bottom edge of your chest, pulling your shoulder blades back, giving me a pause at the top right there. Pause, squeeze those shoulder blades together like crazy so that your chest comes forward. Chest is pushing forward a bit, squeeze those shoulder blades back. Big pause for the isometric contraction that really helps to load the muscle a bit more increasing the time under tension. This exercise works great with slightly heavier dumbbells, maybe 10, 15, even 20, depending on your strength. One more, and we're going into those press jacks. Dumbbells down, cardio interval. Here we go, big push. Now, if you need a lower intensity modification here, you can just come into a side step Big reach with the arms, moving at whatever space worked, at whatever speed works for you here. And when you feel like it, give us some intensity. Whole goal here is to bring the heart rate up. This is your cardio interval. You got about 20 seconds in total. Big reach, you can do it faster or slower. Give me some energy here. And relax. Please keep your feet moving. Walk about your space. Short rest, 10 to 20 seconds, depending on the intensity that you want today. 10 seconds, and then you'll begin your next superset of these same three exercises. We're gonna take about a 20 second break and then go back in. Breathing through it, keep moving, grab some water, turn up the music in the background, have some fun. I've got you muted so you can make as much noise as you want in the background. Going in for our second superset. Okay, how did that single leg deadlift feel? If single leg deadlift felt good, so if I say, hey, how did that exercise feel? And you say, good, that tells me you're not challenging yourself enough. <laughs> Your answer should be, ooh, it was hard. That is the nature of this workout. These workouts are intended to make you stronger. You've gotta be challenging yourself during the sets with your weight load. Yes, this has cardio intervals, but this is still a strength workout at its heart. So second set, Grab a heavier set of dumbbells, if that's right for your fitness level today. And let's go with that second set, single leg deadlift. Feet together, knees bent, slight arch in your lower back, bringing the dumbbells forward in front of the shin and really squeezing through that glute at the top to finish the exercise. Use your breath to pull here. Exhaling on that pull, pulling yourself upward. A lot of people might think of this as a push. It's technically a pull, pulling upward here. <sighs> 
12 reps. Keep your abs braced, strong, and drawn inward. <sighs> 10, 12, 15 reps, depending on your weight load. And immediately going into the other side. Set that foot up. You want your toe turned open. Your foot is not directly straight forward. Slight turn open with that toe because that is neutral positioning of the foot. Your feet are not directly parallel to each other in ideal biomechanics. When you're walking and standing, the way human is built, the toe really should be turned open a small bit. So you want your toe open, turned open slightly outward so that you're activating all the muscles correctly, glutes, hamstrings, Make sure you're keeping your knees soft, especially at the bottom. It's okay if that knee opens up at the top, but you want a softness and a slight bend throughout the range of motion, but especially at the bottom. Drive through that heel, lock the glute right there. Lock the glute. One more. Great. Next exercise, going into that dumbbell bent over row. Feet together, bend your knees, slight arch, and row. Promise me that you're pausing at the top for that isometric contraction, improving the time under tension. But more than anything, I find that it strengthens the muscle better and it helps to contribute you learning ideal technique. Something really cool happens in the musculature when we pause and, and contract. It's almost like the muscles know they're supposed to rise to the occasion. That's one reason why I really love that isometric contraction because it's like your muscles are like, you know, upper back, lats, rhomboids, traps are all like, oh, okay, you want us to work here. Cool. And that pause really triggers that reaction. 12 to 15, going into push jacks. 20 seconds, more or less, depending on your ability. And remember, you can modify if you want to keep this a bit lower intensity or lower heart rate. Let's go. Big push. Keeping the knees soft, moving faster or slower based on your ability, your mood, and your 20% today. Keep breathing, two seconds. Keep it up, keep it up, and walk it out. Keep those legs moving. 10 to 20 second rest. Getting ready to repeat that circuit, that superset. If you want a harder workout today, alternatively, you're gonna join me for our next collection of three exercises. Technically, this is not a superset because there's three exercises. We really should call it a compound complex or a monster set, but we're going to call it a superset because that's what I've been calling it. Okay. Third collection of complex of exercises is going to be RDL, heavier dumbbells here. Feet are about hip width distance apart, toes turned open, knees soft, neutral arch in your lower back. It's a hip hinge. Those hips come back, keeping that arch in your lower back, squeeze your glutes at the top. Knees bent, hips back, squeeze your glutes. Some people call this a deadlift. Technically, it's a Romanian deadlift. Technically, it's a stiff leg deadlift, which is a bit different than a bent leg deadlift. Second exercise, hammer curl, shoulders, back, 
down, chest is lifted, palms stay facing each other, dumbbell end comes to your shoulders. Hammer curl, and are you ready? Take a drink of water, because our next cardio interval is a doozy. We got split squat jumps, and these are always a favorite to complain about. You're gonna start with your feet separated, coming into a comfortable but soft position here, and we are jumping and switching. Jumping and switching. Now, if you want this to be a bit more low intensity, you can literally just come back into an alternating, almost like a skier, and you can do a bit more of a skier if you prefer. Something to just keep you moving, bouncing, and bringing your heart rate up if you don't wanna do the split squat jumps. Okay, you ready? RDL, grab a heavy dumbbell, feet are hip distance, turn those toes open, heavy onto your heels, nothing on the toes, knees soft, neutral, natural arch in your lower back. Hips get drawn back in space until your dumbbells are mid shin. Squeeze your glutes, 10, 12, 15, depending on your weight load. If you're working out at home and you have a fully equipped gym, you can also use a barbell for this exercise. Wanna make this workout a bit harder? Grab that barbell. Make sure your hips are reaching back, heavy onto your hamstrings. Again, the goal here is not to bend over and touch the floor. You technically do want a bit of an upward angle um, through your torso, from your hips to your head, at the bottom of the exercise. So we're not bending over to touch the floor. Um, in general, I don't ever teach that. That's more of what's called a good morning. And it's just something I don't teach. I don't find the value in it, but an RDL, so good for the hamstrings, the glutes and the core. Just make sure you're making it a hip hinge. The knee angle doesn't change a whole lot. Knee comes into a bit of a bend here, straightens out here, but that's about it. 10, 12, 15, moving on to dumbbell, hammer curl next. Shoulders back, down towards your hips, so your neck is nice and long. Palms facing each other, pause at the top. Keeping your elbows in space. Keep your elbows right near your waistline. Not a lot of change in the positionality of your elbows, okay? They're gonna move forward and back in space, maybe an inch or two, but there's not a lot of elbow change keeping the shoulders aggressively anchored down and back. Shoulders anchored down and back. Keep that chest lifted. Super strong here. If you're doing this right, you should almost feel this in your upper back around your shoulder blades and your bra strap as much as you feel it in your biceps. That's right. If you're doing this correctly and you really got your shoulders retracted in space, you're going to feel the muscles of your upper back and shoulder blades activate as well. All right, here we go. You ready for that cardio interval? Split squat jumps. You're gonna start with your feet separated, getting into comfy position. Start conservatively and then gradually build up your intensity as we go. 20 seconds here, big jumps. Use your arms to assist. And remember, if you need a modification to make this a bit easier, you can come into a bit of a skier. You can come into bigger skiers. You can also just come into coming back. I mean, this was a 80s Jane Fonda cardio here. This was a cardio move right here all throughout the 80s, okay? That's gonna be cardio for you too. Otherwise, we got this split squat jumps. A few more seconds, friends. And walk it out. Keep your legs moving. Please do not stop moving. After a cardio segment, short break. 10 to 20 seconds. Harder workout today. 
you're only gonna rest for about 10 seconds and you're gonna jump right back in with that RDL. If you want a moderate workout, stay with me. And of course, that all depends on your fitness level, right? Staying with me might be super challenging for you. Remember, this is your workout. I try to teach it down the middle so that people can join us who want a harder workout and people can join me who want an easier workout. You get to determine what that workout is and you do that by assessing where's your energy today. You wanna to work 20% harder than where you are today. So if you're energized, give me 20% more. If you're tired, only give me 20% more than tired. Push yourself in every workout only 20% beyond your current fitness level and your current energy level. Let's go into our second set. Grab those heavy dumbbells for RDL. We got round two, RDL, hammer curl, split squat jumps. Remember, this is a strength workout. Even though we've got cardio intervals, still a strength workout. So I want you to grab the heaviest dumbbells you have access to, appropriate to your fitness level, appropriate to your strength ability. Make sure you're keeping that arch in your lower back. Arch in your lower back, right there. Let me hear you breathing. Drive into those heels. Use your breath to pull you upright. Ten, twelve, fifteen. Oh, you know me. This is one of my favorite exercises of all time. Such a good one. Such an important exercise. This really should be in your program every single week. And if you don't know how to fit it into your program, if you need guidance on your programming overall, please reach out because the spring session of the Glutes Project is starting next week. If you've never joined me for the Glutes Project, please make sure you check it out at theglutesproject.com. Spring session is starting next week with coaching calls and live workouts. And I would so love for you to join me and my gang of over 200 women. Okay, hammer curls, guys. Chest up, shoulders back. Here we go. Challenge yourself finding that weight load that's hard. Give it some work here. Great arms coming for summer. Two more, getting ready for our split squat jumps. Dumbbells down, let's get ready. Split squat jumps. Starting in your split position, adjusting this as you need to. You can also do a few and take a break. Really make it big here. Big jump. Give me some enthusiasm. Big lift. Use those arms. Really super power it here. Twenty seconds. Walk it out. Give me a few more reps if you want. Ten to twenty second rest, and we're moving into our next complex of exercises. If you want a harder workout, you're gonna repeat that superset. Repeat those three exercises. I guess it's still a superset. It's a superset with a cardio interval. You're gonna repeat that one more time while I show you our fourth and final complex. We've got dumbbell alternating reverse lunge with a push-up. Please listen up for my push-up tutorial when I get down to the ground. And then we've got one final cardio segment. Alternating reverse lunges. You've got a couple of options. Option one, 
body weight only. Option two, if this is challenging, hands on your front knee. You can also use a nearby object to stabilize you if need be. Option two, holding dumbbells at your shoulders. You guys ready? I'll show you push-ups when we get down there to them. Grab those dumbbells or body weight only. As I said, if you're using dumbbells, I prefer to have them up at the shoulders, knees soft. Here we go. Coming back into reverse lunge, alternating 12 on each side, focusing on that front leg, driving into your front heel, alternating for a total of 24 repetitions, which is 12 on each side. You can also do these body weight only. You don't have to load them with weight if you don't want to. Use your breath. 24 in total. Counting them out at your own speed. And then we're gonna be taking it down to the ground for push-ups. If you've got a practiced, technically excellent military push-up, go for it. If you don't have a perfect push-up, please join me for my variation. They tend to work better and they keep your shoulders safer. So for this push-up, we're going to start down on the ground, knees bent, heels to butt. Hands are gonna be just outside your chest with your elbows pointing down. Keep your heels to your butt. You're going to activate and lift off the floor, then fully push all the way to the floor. Activate, then push, floor. Activate, then push, floor. What this does is this keeps your shoulders in a safer position and it puts more of the work onto the upper body, specifically the chest, which is really what we're focused on on a push-up. In my experience, most women don't do push-ups well, the vast majority, so we might as well make them effective. Third exercise, let me show you the hops and then we'll do push-ups together. Third exercise, for those of you guys that are out ahead of me, we're hopping in space, two feet together, 20 seconds. Push-ups, let's go guys. Come on down to your tummy, knees bent, heels to your butt, hands outside your chest, and you're gonna activate away from the floor, then push off the floor, then all the way back down. Lift, push, and floor. Lift, push, and floor. Lift. So what this is doing is this is preloading, isometrically contracting the chest, but it's also putting your shoulders in a better, safer place. Draw those abs in super tight. Big push, couple more. 10, 12, 15. Again, depending on your ability. And listen up. When you transition from the floor to standing, please come to a crouched position first. Please stand, lift your knees 10 times. Then we will go into our cardio segment of hopping for 20 seconds. I wanna make sure you don't get dizzy. Knee lift and let's go, hops. Just pressing up. Now you can hop around in space. You can turn in circles. You can also alternate sides. But I just want you hopping, reaching with the arms. Knees soft to get your heart rate up. Make it enthusiastic. Twenty seconds here. And walk it out. Keep moving. Keep your legs moving. Please don't stop. Little bit of recovery, letting your heart rate come down. A 
going into our second and final complex. How did the first one feel? How were those reverse lunges for you? Now, reverse lunges do tend to bring your heart rate up and that's okay, but I also want your musculature to be challenged. So on your first set, if you felt more cardio than musculature on your reverse lunges, I want you to slow down and use a heavier weight load because if your cardio is up, but you're not feeling it on the musculature, it's more cardio. You're moving at a speed that stimulates more the cardiovascular system and I want this to be more muscular. So grab heavier dumbbells if you can, slow down a bit. And if you are limited by your equipment, you're going to do more repetitions. Okay, reverse, <clears throat> Alternating reverse lunges. Are you ready? If you're using dumbbells at your shoulders, but it's also absolutely okay to be using a bit of assistance, body weight only. This is a great place to start if you are learning this exercise, if you are just developing your strength. This is a fabulous and totally okay place to start your reverse lunges. You've got 12 in total, 24 or more, depending on what works for your fitness level. Focus on that front leg. It's still a front leg exercise. Heavy onto that front heel. using your breath to fuel the move. Definitely another favorite exercise of mine. I absolutely love alternating reverse lunges. So good for the glutes, so good for the hamstrings, great for balance. All right, second exercise, push-ups. Remember, if you know you have a great push-up technique, cool, go for it. But word to the wise, push-ups that don't have perfect technique tend to lead to shoulder injuries. Can't tell you how many of my clients in the past 30 years I've seen it happen to, it happened to me. I pulled a shoulder muscle, maybe even a tendon because of doing loaded military push-ups. So I really find push-ups ineffective unless you're super fit. And like I said, if you've got great technique, please go for it. Otherwise we're gonna activate lifting away from the floor, then pushing all the way back down. Activate, then push, then down. Activate, then push. You're gonna notice if you do it my way, it's a lot more chest and arm focused activation. Ten, twelve, fifteen. And short rest. From here, you're gonna to come to your crouched position, taking a moment to transition from the floor to standing, lifting your knees 10 times before we go into our final cardio interval. Just letting your body adjust to being in the standing position, bringing the blood flow back up to your head by lifting the knees. And final cardio interval, here we go. Two foot hop. You can also come to alternating individual foot hop, whatever works. Use those arms though. Big high energy, high energy. Make it faster if you need more of a cardio interval. Lots of energy here. Big push, big push, big push. I see you guys. I see you. You look amazing. Five seconds. And 
Walk it out. Keep moving. Don't stop. Keep moving. Letting the heart rate come down just a little tiny bit. I'm going to take you through a couple, two cool down exercises. And then if you want to stick around for the walking lunge workshop, you know, I'll be doing some walking lunges after. If you're watching this in playback and on recording and you want to join us for a live workout or you want to join for the live walking lunge workshop, please go to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout. It's probably linked below if you would like to join us live. So from here, I want you to just take a big inhale up, bringing that heart rate down a little bit. Two more big breaths. Big inhale up. One more. Got a couple cool down stretches for you. One that we started with. Inhale up, interlock your fingers. Bring them back behind your head. Bring your elbows back as if you had a wall behind you and you're pushing your elbows back into the wall, pressing your chest forward, shoulders releasing to your hips, neck is nice and long, really great chest stretch, shoulder opener, and relax. Next cool down exercise is a balance exercise. If you need to use something to stabilize yourself, that's totally fine. You're gonna bring your heel up to your butt if you need to catch your pant leg or grab a strap, that's okay. Otherwise, grab your shoe or grab your shoelace. Let's come into a quad stretch. I'm gonna teach you something. So keep your standing knee bent of this leg that you are stretching that's back behind. You want to bring your knee forward so that it matches your standing knee and you want to tuck your pelvis. Draw your pelvis under, tuck your pelvis under, bringing that stretching leg forward so that you can actually lengthen out the quadricep, believe it or not, that starts high in the hip and goes down below the knee. So by tucking the pelvis under and pulling that knee so it's right next to the standing knee, not in front, not way behind, right next to it with your pelvis tucked under, you're gonna get more of that great quad stretch. You should be stretching your quadriceps every single day if you're a woman because we tend to have an anteriorly rotated pelvis in the first place and this causes the quadriceps to get tight. And so by coming into this position with a stretch, you open up those, that quadricep, both sides obviously, both your quadriceps, to keep the knees healthy. This is one of the best stretches you can do to keep your knees healthy. One of the best stretches you can do to keep your knees healthy. There are other strengthening exercises that are equally important, but those usually focus on the hamstrings and the glutes. Believe it or not, a lot of physical therapists have it wrong. One of the best ways to keep your knees healthy is by strengthening your glutes and your hamstrings, which are the posterior chain. A lot of times people strengthen the quadriceps. For knee health, in my experience, you need to be strengthening the posterior chain and stretching the quadriceps. Thanks so much for joining us. I will see you next time.